Hey everyone, super excited for this chat today with VMware by Broadcom on the evolving partner ecosystem following Broadcom's acquisition. Amar, how are you? Great, Evan. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Well, I'm glad to have you here. I have lots of questions and we're going to dive in shortly. Before that, maybe introduce yourself properly, um, a little bit about your current role at uh, VMware by Broadcom, and um, you are a real industry insider. Uh, would love to hear a little bit about your personal professional background. Sounds great, great. So, so yes, I'm Omar Mohammed. I'm based out of uh, Bellevue, Washington, and uh, I've been with VMware for uh, six and a half years, but uh, been um, part of the industry. Uh, before this, I was with uh, Amazon Web Services for a couple of years, and before that, uh, 15 and a half years at Microsoft in a variety of different roles in sales, marketing, business development, operations. My last role was leading the worldwide sales for uh, the enterprise mobility in Microsoft, and then uh, decided to um, uh, change uh, jobs, And but I've been in the cloud world for the past uh, a dozen years. That's quite a journey. I have a lot to learn from you here today. And describe your current role at VMware yeah. Broadcom and your, your team's mission. Yeah, exactly. So uh, within the VCF division, which is the largest division within Broadcom, I lead all of our partner ecosystem. So that includes all of our service provider partners, our hyperscaler partnerships, our OEM partnerships, our uh, tech alliances, semiconductors. So pretty much anybody who we consider as a VCF partner, VMware Cloud Foundation partner, is uh, on my team. Oh, what a fantastic group. Very exciting. Um, if there's anything we know in tech, that change is uh, the norm to be expected. So, you know, describe for us, if you will, the changes that partners can expect from the new Broadcom Advantage Partner Program. Absolutely, absolutely. But before I describe what the changes are, let me kind of set the context in terms of why change is even needed in the first place. It's not that VMware was doing everything wrong and now Broadcom is just <laughs> making it right. The reality was over the past 25 plus years of VMware history, each of the partner route to market was created in isolation to solve a customer challenge or a partner route to market scenario, whether it was OEM or whether it was our service provider. Um, but in doing all of these, we created a spaghetti. We created a mishmash of different offerings, different unit of measurement. Um, we had over 10,000 SKUs that we were selling. And it was very hard wow. for not just, not, not just for customers, but even for partners who are doing quotations and all of that, oh, what are the right SKUs? What should I be using? What are the right bundles? So mm. we had 10 number of bundles. Then on top of it, we had a very different unit of measurement. We were selling some things by CPU, some route to market by gigabyte of RAM, some by the cores, some by uh, the number of nodes or hosts, some by the wow. dozen, some by the kilogram. And it was just so hard for customers or even par uh, cu you know, to understand if I'm getting a quotation from different partner, how am I comparing Apple to Apple? What is the right price am I you know, being charged? And it just made life very, very difficult, not just for partners, but also for our end customer. And of course, for VMware operationally to maintain all of these. So we knew it had to change. So, the, so some, some of the big changes we have made across the business is a simplifying the portfolio so that we are now um, having an offering around um, VMware Cloud Foundation being the hero offering that includes all of the compute storage, network virtualization, along with the management or automation um, as, as a full package solution. Um, for customers that are much smaller in size or have very smaller footprint and don't need the full stack uh, VCF, we have a VMware uh, vSphere Foundation offering, uh, which is very much like an HCI uh, bundle. Um, and then we have even vSphere standard for some of the smaller customer who only need perhaps compute virtualization. So we have those offering, but instead of having 10,000 or so SKU, we have roughly around um, uh, four to eight different SKUs that are centered around uh, solving that customer need. Then the, one of the big change we also made was around simplifying the unit of measurement. So instead of coming up with six different ways to measure and count, said so everything is measured on a per core basis. So per physical core. So 
across whether it's OEM, whether it's hyperscalers, whether it's our uh, uh, service provider partnership, our reseller distributor, everything is around per core uh, unit pricing, which makes it easier for our end customer to understand and plan and budget and compare pricing and you know, have an increased competition out in the market. The third area, which is, uh, this was a change that was underway within VMware even before Broadcom, so I don't give Broadcom credit for that, was change from perpetual software business to subscription. Heck, in my career, we started that back in 2009, 10, and uh, my previous employer. So the entire software industry have moved to that whole subscription model versus a perpetual license plus maintenance model. Um, VMware probably, I would say, one of the last one to do it. So we are now mm -hmm. finally implementing it, but this was in works for probably at least five, six years within VMware. And it, that really solves the challenge of continuous innovation because customers don't expect that every two, three years, you're going to come out with a major release and I'll go through the upgrade cycle. Customers are now anticipating and expecting the vendors to deliver continuous improvement, monthly releases, quarterly releases, annual updates, real-time updates on security patches and fixes. And in a subscription world, it's much easier to do that, keep and maintain, versus having to time your major releases with the next upgrade cycle, with the next renewal cycle. So it just takes that financial motivation of tying your releases and your SKU strategy away, and you can serve your customer better because this is just a continuous subscription with the customer. So those are the major, what I call, changes that uh, we have implemented um, in here. Now, contrary to what some of the FUD and noise out there in the market, um, we are not making it harder. We are actually making it easier for customer to take their workload from on-premise to a cloud. Mm. How? In the past, when customer had to take their workload from on-premise to a cloud environment, whether it's a hyperscaler environment or a service provider um, uh, cloud, uh, you had to buy an entire new subscription, buy, to buy entire new licensing or a service that includes those underlying licenses. We have introduced what we call the, the subscription mobility, where customers who have their subscription for uh, we, we, uh, we, VMware Cloud Foundation um, on a private cloud can now, without having to rebuy anything, move those subscription over to public cloud. Now, this means more than just commercial mobility, commercial flexibility of just moving my subscription. It also means that we have to make it a technically easy for them. And the way we do that, instead of saying that you have to reinstall everything and redo everything we're saying mm. is requiring all of our cloud provider partner to deploy the full stack as well. So if, if I have the same stack deployed in hyperscaler environment with our Azure partnership and Google partnership and AWS partnership and the same stack deployed in our service provider environment, then it makes it easy for customer to say, whatever I was running on private cloud, my VMs can move as is to a public cloud environment. All these scripts and automation and my runbook and everything that I was running on uh, private cloud can now extend to the public cloud without having to do anything. So that subscription mobility is more than just a commercial promise of saving cost. It's also a promise that you can have full technology and compatibility and integration um, with, the, uh, with the cloud environment as well. Wow, well done. Well, there's a lot to unpack there, but it, it sounds phenomenal. And talk about the impact, what it means for all these great new partners you're, you're bringing on board and new industries, new opportunities, as well as how they affect uh, VMware's existing partners. Exactly. So let me actually kind of uh, describe that in each different partner type. Let's start with our hyperscaler partnerships. Hyperscaler partnership, extremely strategic and valuable partnership for us because our customers expect us to have a you know uh, integration and compatibility with our hyperscaler uh, partners as well. Uh, the license mobility is a centerpiece or subscription mobility is a centerpiece to make sure that we can now easily take both from a commercial standpoint and technology integration and compatibility standpoint, customer workload from on-prem private cloud to a public cloud and vice versa and back and forth. So that's one change that we are implementing. In the past, we have had varying degree of implementation of these different components in the public cloud environment, and we are standardizing that. So that's one change. Now let's look at our um, OEM strategy. Our OEM um, was mix of um, combination of resell motion and as well as OEM. We're going back to what I call the, the basic of our OEM 
what OEM is intended for, the original equipment manufacturer, where you create a differentiated solution, an engineer solution, where the hardware and the software light up together and shine differently and solve a customer problem. So we are mm -hmm. now asking all of our OEM partners that are in the program to work with us and my team helps them design and validate what I call engineer solution. So they are solving a customer business problem versus anybody can ship boxes with software. That's not the, you know, <laughs> uh, what I call um, the sexy part. The sexy part is when there is differentiation, there is some unique magic that happens between hardware and software working together. And, and that's exactly what we are pushing with our OEM um, you know, partners to make sure that we are solving the right customer challenge in a differentiated way that creates value for both uh, them as well as for the customer. Now, let me move over to the cloud service provider. Cloud service provider also has some of the big changes that uh, we have announced. Um, so in the past, the approach was anybody, we were, we were call it, you know, uh, if I use the analogy of a, a car industry or automotive industry, we were selling car parts. And we are, uh, everybody was kind of pulling together their own car. They buy the engine from this and, 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 and transmission from here and windshield from here and pull together a car. Now, what that did, it created a fragmented experience for our end customer. Again, end customer experience being the, the, the centerpiece here. You want to make sure there is consistency of end customer experience and the support that we provide to that end customer so that we know there is consistent um, uh, support as well. So now we are acquiring that, hey, look, if anything is going to be sold in the name of VMware Cloud, it has to mean something. And that means something means that each cloud provider who are part of our Pinnacle pro uh, program or Premier program or even white label program leverage the full stack VCF. So compute, network, storage, virtualization, and then of course ma management and automation. All, of course they can add value, they can add additional tools and components and all the you know, application and offering, but that basic private or the, the cloud offering is built on VMware. So that again, going back to the customer experience, their workload that they were running on their private data center can move to a managed environment and vice versa and move back. And there is consistency. So there is no lock-in. If, if a customer is unhappy with a service provider and wants to move that over to another one, they should be free to do so without having to feel like they have to redo all of their VMs and taking their architecture and so on. So that is a big change that we are doing. Second is the service provider business we used to charge by memory, which again caused that imbalance in the uh, in industry or confusion. We are now standardizing everything on a per core basis. So OEM, our hyperscaler, our service provider, everything is on a per core metric. So that requires a change. So that is a change um, in, in, in the program uh, for our service provider business. And then for these smaller partners, um, obviously they will have the ability, the ones who cannot run a full stack VCF or do not have the you know, appropriate uh, modern data center can actually sign up with uh, other providers or our cloud commerce manager mm. to have a white label offer. So there is something for everybody. Nobody should be feel left out or have no way to go because we are catering to the needs of your top and the biggest and the largest of the service provider to the um, smallest, um, the one that have few customers and uh, you know maybe 10, 20 servers only to serve their customers. All of them are equally important to us. Now let me wow, move what a over comprehensive to our... uh, comprehensive uh, approach. Absolutely. I'll let you catch your breath, but yeah, continue on yeah, describing so the, next... the landscape here. Yeah. The the next one was our DST and reseller relationship. Now in mm. the past we have had what I call again the imbalance in the market where we had um, a huge number of distributors which didn't allow, and then of course you had um, a different relationship with different distributor and not everybody was on the same level playing field and just created the market imbalance that if I am a reseller, I'm forced to work with a particular distributor because they are the biggest game in town and I have nobody else. Um, and then uh, what, we, what we changed though is we said we're going to concentrate on fewer but increase competition for our reseller partner. Reseller partner that are tens of thousands of a reseller partner around the world that are the um, the foot soldiers and call it the, the business driver mm. for VMware. We want to see them thriving. We want to see them be able to choose their distributor who they want to do business with. So we created or updated the distributor program to make sure that um, resellers have easy access to distributor. But more importantly, we also brought this support model closer to the end customer. So now our distributor will be taking the level one, level two support and have direct conduit into VMware for level three escalation and beyond, but they will be the one directly providing support closer to the customer. 
And not only we are enabling them with technology and training and all of that, we are even transferring our support professional support engineers to do distributors. So they are ready from day wow. one. Um, I'm providing this support. And the whole idea is to provide better customer experience, support experience, and bring support closer to the customer. The other point I would make is, contrary to what the noise in the market, of course, we had to change the program. VMware used to have the VMware Partner Connect in the program model. When you come over to the Broadcom, Broadcom has the Partner Advantage program. So there were some technicality that everybody's, but 100% of our reseller partner, whoever did any active business with us in the last 18 months, have reinvited back to the Broadcom program. So we didn't leave anybody out. Mm. B, whatever tier, the highest tier, whatever tier they had already in VMware, we grandfathered them in that tier within the Broadcom mm. program. Um, so if they were the highest level VMware partner, they automatically became the pinnacle partner starting from um, uh, you know now. Um, so that they don't have to re-earn those uh, certification or tiering uh, to um, uh, to feel uh, you know important. So that is already there. Um, I'm super super pumped and excited about the changes because if you really take a step back and look at those changes that we have implemented, is to make life easier for our end customer, which is obviously in the best interest of our entire ecosystem because this is the same customer. And then B, make it easier for partners to do business with us. Change is always hard. Yes, there are changes. Change is always hard and it takes a while to absorb. But the end result is what I'm extremely pumped and excited about. You can probably tell what it will mean for our customers and our partner ecosystem once we are through that transitional period. Wow, well, what a thoughtful and well-considered approach. You, you've seen the figure two in this industry to say the least. You must be pretty excited about the overall Broadcom opportunity, given the kind of vast resources and scale that uh, Broadcom has. What are you thinking ar around that in the future? Absolutely, absolutely. And I'll tell you not just you know my personal level of excitement, but why I'm excited. Why I'm excited is because in the, again, not that VMware was doing it wrong. It's just that because of that organic growth we have had over the past two and a half decade, we never really took the time to really rationalize. So I'll give you an example. Um, what we call our private cloud full stack VCF. VCF was part of four or five different business units, engineering teams within VMware world. And for whatever reason, because some of those technology came from acquisitions, some of them were homegrown. So NSX mm -hmm. was something very different and, 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 and a different group and, and, and ARIA or our management stack was in a different group. First and foremost, now all of that comes together under a single leadership, under VCF division, under single leadership. Now, it's just more than just a leadership change. What it means is all the product roadmaps get aligned. So now you have to make sure that all the product roadmap get aligned. We are working towards a single stack of VCF. So that common identity model, common framework, common um, security posture, all of these things get better and better integrated together. So the entire VCF acts and behave like a single offering versus combination or a bundle of its individual mm. parts. That's one change. Same thing on a partner ecosystem that my team is now leading. We used to have those team individually in different uh, teams. And again, they were all doing things right, but for that narrow vision of that ecosystem, not looking left to right, what does it mean for the broader ecosystem? Are we creating consistency and increase competition for on behalf of our customer, or are we limiting competition? Mm. So those are the things that now we can look at those changes and say, hey, if we make changes on an OEM model, how does it impact to our hyperscaler? How does it impact to the other partner? Will that create a disadvantage for another partner type if I do X, Y, and Z? We never had the opportunity or um, uh, luxury to do that because we were so siloed. Now within the Broadcom world and bringing it all together, we can look left to right and make sure there is consistency. We went through the painstaking process of make sure our pricing, our discounting model, our partner incentive and everything are well aligned. Let me give you one more example. In the old world, we used to have these, what I call partner incentive model that are called piecemeal. Here's an incentive or offering for POC and assessment and mm. creating pipeline and deal registration and activation incentive and consumption dollar and partner had to earn their way along the way of every step. So it's like connecting pennies along the way. 
Broadcom approach is very different. It says, look, whatever you can afford to give your partner as a incentive or margin, just give it all up front so that they can be more predictable, build a book of business, knowing that this is how much I have to play with. I can hire the right sales team. I can create my compensation plan. I can build what is my margin profile, how much as a disc tea I'm going to offer to reseller or reseller offer to the customer. It just becomes more predictable versus spreading the crumbs along the way and say you have to collect those pennies along the way. And again, different approach, but in my view, the right approach so that we could be more predictable for our own partners. Oh, very, very thoughtful. So you're obviously, uh, you got your hands on day-to-day, week-to-week, quarter-to-quarter, you're involved in so much. Any other sort of big strategic goals, kind of longer term, when it comes to the partner ecosystem under your leadership, you can preview? Well, so pretty much all of the changes we have announced already and what we are doing now is what I call fine tuning. So based on the feedback, Mm. we're, again, actively listening to our partners, our customers, and really looking at what changes can we make. Uh, I'll I'll, I'll give you um, uh, some example where we announce incremental changes based on the feedback from what we are hearing from our partners, for example, like CSP partners. Our CSP partners, we were going to have a finite number that we what we call pinnacle partners, and then we were going to have a finite number that is considered premier, and the, the bar to qualify for premier was um, higher. Um, and based on the feedback and desire and ask from partners to more partner wanting to join the premier program, we are now lowering that mm-hmm. bar to make sure we can have twice and much more than twice as many partners in Premier that we anticipated before because we are seeing such a huge ask from partners that, hey, I want to be a Premier partner. I'm ready to deploy full stack VCF as well. Why are you leaving me out? We said, no, we don't. That was not the intention. And we're making those kind of changes. Um, There were um, also uh, things like, uh, you know, hey, we didn't have the white label program up and running do we um, partners who need to sign up as the premier or pinnacle partner have to turn around and also set up a white label program for some of the, the smaller partner Then the smaller partner saying, hey, I don't have enough time because those partners are not ready. So we're giving him more time. So we're making those tweaks as we get the feedback from our partners and customers. And uh, he also announced other uh, changes from a support perspective and things like that. We'll, we'll continue to make those changes as needed because the goal is, is to create a vibrant partner ecosystem. Let me just make it very clear. VMware under Broadcom loves partner even more than when we loved (laughs) under (laughs) VMware. We uh, want to make sure there is a thriving ecosystem of our partners and make sure that they are what I call created right swim lanes so that there is no mixing of value where somebody is a distributor and also a reseller and also an OEM and also a financer of the deal and also this and also that. And then the rest of the partner ecosystem, like, how do I compete with that? Where's what? It, where's the oxygen left for me to operate in? We're making sure that we create the right swim lane so everybody feel like they have an equal opportunity to compete and win business with the customer. Well, Explore is phenomenal. You're great and really good getting uh, this in-depth point of view. Can't wait for more feedback uh, and direction. Always always a thrill to chat with insiders at uh, Broadcom and uh, VMware. Thanks so much for, for joining, Amar. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and really appreciate uh, your channel. I love it. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everyone. And reach out You know, with any questions you might have. Uh, Broadcom uh, puts out amazing Uh, content, very educational, insightful, and I always enjoy it as well. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much.